super excited for today's tutorial. I'm going to be sharing with you the Evie Easy fabric basket. Hi there, my name is Rebecca from Lapso Create. Fun thing about this is that it doesn't require a pattern and it's a great beginner friendly project. So the features to this fabric basket include straps, box corner, lined interior, and the great thing about it is that you can make it as soft and squishy as you like, or you can make it to where it stands up. You can easily adapt the size, make it smaller or larger. How about making some for your kids or grandkids for Easter basket? I'm planning on using them for patterns. I'm going to be hanging it up next to my sewing machine so I can easily throw fabric scraps and threads. You can make it out of wax canvas, waterproof canvas. You can make a bigger version for kids room to hold books and toys help you corral things like Legos. So once you've made one, I promise that you won't stop making them and you'll find uses for every room in your house, including your car. Okay, so let's take a look at the supplies that you'll need for these beauties. Additionally, you'll need an iron, an ironing board, and something to press a curve shape. You could use a towel and some interfacing. Okay, so for the pieces of fabric, you'll be needing cotton fabric. You'll need a piece of fabric that's about 17 inches across and 12 inches down. You will interface this with craft fuse. And then you'll also need a piece of lining fabric. 17 by 12 and this I have interfaced with SF 101. You'll also need two rectangles for your straps and these will measure 17 by 5 inches and I left these without interfacing and I did stiffen them up with some heavy spray starch well, I haven't done that yet, but I will do that. So let's make these straps. Okay, so add some spray starch and press. So to assemble the straps, you're going to first fold the strap in half and iron that. And then take the raw edges and press them towards the center. And then take the other raw edge and press it towards the center. And then you'll press the two folded edges together. You can use clips or you can use pins. And repeat for the other strap. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch down both sides of the strap using a three millimeter stitch length about an eighth of an inch in from the edge. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, any time that you're making a strap, you want to go down the same way as you did the first time, so both directions going this way instead of going down and then coming back the other way because if you do that you can get a twisted strap. Next you're going to take your exterior panel and your two straps. So I'm going to place each strap two inches in from the exterior edge. You can use clips or pins. making sure not to twist the strap. Okay, 
and repeat for this side. Okay, so next I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to base down each of the handles using a four millimeter stitch length. And you're just going to baste it at about an eighth of an inch from the edge. No need to back stitch because it will get caught when I sew back around. And repeat for the other side. In this section, we're going to work on the assembly. Now take your lining and with the right sides together, you're going to put the lining on top of the exterior panel and you're going to clip these two panels together. So you have the exterior and the lining with the right sides together and make sure that your straps are out of the way. And clip or pin. So next, I'm going to stitch down both of the short sides with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length and I'm going to go at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the beginning and end. So at this point, you have, it's like a tube. You're gonna stick your hands inside the tube and you're going to shift the tube so that the lining is stacked on top of each other and then the exterior fabrics are stacked on top of each other. You're going to match the seams and clip. And you can nestle all the seams so it reduces the bulk so now we're gonna work on the boxing. At this point, you're going to need your ruler. Okay, you're gonna grab a pencil or a marking utensil, and you're going to place a line two inches in from the edge, or from the folded edge. You're going to repeat for the lining side. Then you're going to flip the whole unit over and repeat the process for this side as well. So next you're going to take and you're going to press at the marked line. And if you're using craft fuse, it really kind of helps because it is a crisper interfacing. going to repeat the folding process for the other side. You're going to put the middle in and bring the two pencil lines together and clip. And repeat for the lining side as well. OK, 
Okay, so next I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch down this side, down this side. On this side, I'm going to leave a turning gap. So I'm going to back stitch here and back stitch here, skip and leave this unstitched and stitch all the way down. And you do want to make sure that your straps are still out of the way and again quarter inch seam allowance with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Trim your threads and now I'm going to turn it the right side out through the gap. Just go for one of the corners and then push through. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and close the gap with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length about an eighth of an inch or as close to the edge as you can while catching both sides. Back stitch. Turn the machine on. <laughs> okay, just double check to make sure that it's closed. Okay, so now we're ready to press the lining inside of the bag. You could use the lining part. It's kind of cute to have it showing like that if you want. Or you can make sure it's pushed in all the way. So for instance, this on this one, I press the lining all the way in. I think on this one, I may just leave the polka dots showing at the top because it's kind of cute. This is where you can use a towel that's rolled up and then take it back to the sewing machine and top stitch all the way around. And if you're doing it this way, I top stitched all the way around at about a quarter of an inch. If you want to do an eighth of an inch, you could also do that. And when I do this one, since I'm leaving the polka dots I showing, I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch from this seam right here. And don't worry, all the wrinkles will come out. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna top stitch it all the way around with a three millimeter stitch length. Make sure that the underneath is not under there. If you have a sewing machine with a free arm, it's a little bit easier. Okay, now I'm gonna take it for the final press. So that was a lot of fun. So now let's take a look at the finished product. 